السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلله فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن إلا وأنتم مسلمون يا أيها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحدة وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والأرحام إن الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم أعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما أما بعد فإن خير الكلام كلام الله وخير الهدي هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الأمور محدثاتها وكل محدثة بدعة وكل بدعة ضلالة وكل ضلالة في النار Dear respected elders, brothers and sisters in Islam I welcome you all again to this auspicious occasion in which you have the opportunity to come together and listen to some of the advice from some of our auspicious and wise speakers and scholars. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to bless this event and we ask Allah to send his blessings to Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and to his family and to all those who follow him in the guidance and righteousness. The topic a reasonable response which is obviously dealing with the run of events that are taking place in the world today when you look from the east to the west you cannot but think of the hadith or the prophecy that Muhammad وسلم, he once mentioned to his companions Prophet Muhammad وسلم, a thousand four hundred years back he was giving nasiha and the sahaba was uh, were, you keep used to asking for nasiha And one of the things that we know that he said that there will come a time when the rest of the world will be feasting upon the Muslims, upon the Ummah of Muhammad Wasallam, like as if there was a um, table of dinner of food and people gather around especially when there is laham there is meat you know there is uh, meat when how people get free food and then they get together and they want to take especially in a buffet they want to take every a piece of everything so when you look from the east to the west, you remember what Rasulullah sallallahu he said. He said they will be feasting upon them. And then the Sahaba, they asked because 
they used to be so few in number and Islam was spreading in such far places in Arabia and with such few Sahaba compared to the rest of the Arabia and the rest of the nations like the great superpowers of those days the Roman Empire and the Persians they were subduing to the message of Islam lands were coming under the folds of Islam and people were ex accepting Islam and the Sahaba who rose from Mecca and Medina al Madina al Munawwara they were not as many as the hundreds of thousands of the Romans and the Persians that they would face so they were few in number and yet they were able to reach out to the farthest of the places and the most difficult and unimaginable superpowers came down to defeat so then they asked Muhammad Rasulullah they said Ya Rasulullah will we be such small in number will we will we be smaller and yet more lesser than what we are today he said no the Muslims will not be the, the Islam the number that the numbers that we see it will not be small in number they will not be lesser than you in other words but they will be like as if you have the froth collecting when you go to a river or you go to a beach and when you see the waves hitting the shores you see froth and you see muck collected around it in large numbers and this is how they will be but yet we will be in a sorry state and one of the reasons of this sorry state is because our focus and our guidance that we take the implementations that we make is not according to what the Quran teaches us or Rasulullah left the legacy the Sunnah but we are divided not under the same knowledge and the same wisdom that the Sahaba those days were able to reach even till China Islam had spread all the way to the Far East without a single sword being left lifted Islam had spread in the depths of Europe and the gates of sciences had opened up because they were following the Quran and the Sunnah implementing the Sunnah of Muhammad وسلم, like we can't even imagine today we cannot even imagine and they were not many in number today we face a lot of atrocities that the Sahaba did not face but Muslims in most of the parts of the world do not face the persecutions and the atrocities that the Sahaba the companions of Prophet Muhammad faced 1400 years back in most of our peaceful societies like here in Kerala we have the opportunity and we have the support of the authorities but yet we are divided we are not able to come with a reasonable response to our own problems we are not able to muster enough wisdom 
from the best of the guidances that was left by Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam because of which he is named as the best personality in the in the whole world in the history of mankind we are not able to implement those teachings in our daily lives we are not able to become even half the example that the sahaba were the sahaba were such that if they were people of different faith they would just meet them and see their akhlaq and see how they dealt with in their businesses in their trade or in any kind of dealing they would eventually want to know where do they get this kind of akhlaq characteristic and etiquette from and eventually they would submit to islam and the submission to islam my brothers if it was left to us muslims islam wouldn't have spread to the depths of the world even till today from the past 15 uh, 13 14 years it's there are more people that have come into islam from other faiths than ever in the history of islam in this much period this short period since the events of 911 and then other problems in other countries or propagandas and then we have people who who have disrespect for personalities and they have been doing what they have to do in the name of freedom of speech however islam has given us the guidance for dealing with this if we remember what allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the quran if we only read the quran we read the stories of musa alayhi salam we read the so stories of isa ibrahim lut saleh hud alayhi salam we would know that allah azza wa jal he reminds us that each and every one of them they were not spared by their people they were not spared by their people and each and every one of them were mocked at allah subhanahu wa taala has reminded muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam in the quran that each and every one of these prophets and messengers ya muhammad before you they were mocked at wa ma ya'tihim mir rasulin illa kanu bihi yastahzi'un that whenever a messenger was sent to them it was never ever that it happened that a messenger was sent to them those people illa kanu bihi yastahzi'un that they were not mocked at that they were not ridiculed but allah azza wa jal goes on to tell prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam inna kafaynaka al mustahzi'in that o oh muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam verily it is us inna verily kafaynakum kafaynaka that we will be sufficient for them the ones who mock at you this is one of the ayahs in the quran the guidance of the response that we need to have especially if people mock at our prophet the prophet of islam alhamdulillah in this country we don't see this kind of culture and i pray to allah azza wa jal that such kind of ridicule and culture that people 
should be saved, their elderly, their leaders, their freedom fighters, and those who had built societies should be spared from this. They should be spared from these kind of treachery because they were the ones and we cannot imagine today for example anybody saying a word against Mohandas Karamchand Gandhi we cannot imagine that in this country I was reading an article in the New York Post after recent events that took place in France and they were mentioning about how the freedom of speech works in certain of these uh, Western countries. That the laws they protect the individuals. Laws are there to protect their laws, the man-made laws. Are there to protect the individuals but not their beliefs or not the things that they believe in, their gods or their religions. When we look at this, well, this is their law and Muhammad sallallahu this is the reason why he encouraged the Muslims, encouraged the Muslims to make migration, to make hijrah. And hijra can be from a place which where you are not able to establish your salah, for example, or worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, like Ibrahim alayhi salam he did. He made migration from Egypt. Like the Sahaba they did in the time of Prophet Muhammad sallam, the first migration was from Medina, uh, from Mecca to Ethiopia. So this is one of the things that Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu has advised. However, Allah Azza wa Jal reminds us in the Quran, even at the time of Musa Sallam, as Allah says in the Quran, wa id qala Musa li qawmihi, inna Allah ya amurukum an tadbahu baqara. He gives us Allah Azza wa Jal. Uh, an analogy, an example of what this mockery in the name of freedom of speech that people haven't been doing now. They've been doing it since the time of Nuh alayhi salam. And you know who Nuh, Noah alayhi salam was? He was the first messenger of Islam. Nuh alayhi salam amongst the children of Adam he was the first messenger of Islam and people had been mocking and ridiculing from that time. So Allah Azza wa Jal reminds us when Musa, remember that when Musa, he said to his people that Allah has commanded you to sacrifice a cow and this was the Bani Israel. And they said, Kalu, that they said, Are you making fun of us? Are you mocking us? And Musa, he said, Kala a'udhu billahi an akuna min al jahileen. That verily I ask Allah's protection. May Allah forbid that I should be amongst those who are ignorant. So Allah tells us that this kind of mocking or any kind of mocking that you would do to people is part of ignorance. And the Muslims should understand that this ignorance cannot be retaliated with ignorance, with an act of ignorance, or with a response which will be likewise. So Allah Azza wa compares this kind of mocking 
to ignorance because these are the very people who enlightened the societies. Musa and Isa and uh, Ibrahim and eventually Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. لا يفرق بين أحد من رسله. The Muslims they do not make any difference between their messengers, and they are not to be ridiculed. Not one of them. And it is not acceptable for a Muslim to accept that, or to even think of calling a name or calling ridiculing any of the prophets or messengers. We can't even think of that because we will not be under the folds of Islam if we do it. So Allah Azza wa Jal, He calls it as ignorance. And the Quran tells us, فَلَنَا قُصَّنَّ عَلَيْهِمْ بِعِلْمٍ How to respond to the ignorant one of the ways of the response to the ignorance because if mockery is ignorance then what is the correct response to it one of the responses that quran gives us is that you should be tolerant you should be tolerant and command what is right and pay no attention to the foolish as Allah Azza wa Jal he says in another ayah which is so famous so not responding to their ridicule and mockery is one of the response one of the reasonable responses to ignore the ignorant people. As Allah Azza wa Jal also says, وَعِبَادُ الرَّحْمَانِ الَّذِينَ يَمْشُونَ عَلَى الْأَرْضِ هَوْنًا وَإِذَا خَاطِبَهُمُ الْجَاهِلُونَ قَالُوا سَلَامًا That when the servants of Ar-Rahman, the most merciful, when the worshippers of the most merciful, merciful and who are the worshippers that Allah is referring to when Allah Azza wa Jal he says Rahman the worshippers or the servants of Ar Rahman Yamshuna the servants of that merciful the Lord the most merciful are the ones who walk humbly on this earth in a humble manner, they do not show haughtiness. They do not show pride even when they walk. Because walking like this is not even acceptable in Islam. This is not the correct etiquette of even walking. Allahu Akbar. In certain places when you are maybe on a battlefield or you know facing an enemy, once a Sahabi Abu Dujana he put a bandana and he started strutting in front of the army. Prophet Muhammad ﷺ, he said, this kind of walking, it would not be accepted any other place. But here, it is acceptable. That shows us that we Muslims, when we walk, we even walk with humbleness. As Allah Azza says in the Quran, وَعِبَادُ الرَّحْمَنُ الَّذِينَ يَمْشُونَ عَلَى الْأَرْضِ هَوْنَا that the servants of the most merciful they when they walk they walk with humbleness with humbly on earth and who when when the foolish people وَإِذَا خَاطَبَهُمُ الْجَاهِلُونَ قَالُوا and when the foolish people خَاطَبَهُمُ الْجَاهِلُونَ means the ignorant people or the foolish people or those who are senselessly talking or trying to create an argument or just for the sake of arguing, they're arguing with you. When someone like this comes to you and he makes this kind of a mockery and a scene and he's trying to create a greater fitna 
And mind you, my brothers, this is exactly the goal of those who create mockery and create, try to create fitna from a spark. Because verily, a fire, it only starts, it starts with a spark. A fire, it starts with a spark, and that is enough. So these people, their goals, the ignorant, is to, to start the fire and then to inflame the societies and eventually harm people in, in large numbers. But the Muslims, Allah Azza wa Jal, He says, and when they walk humbly on the earth and the ignorant, they uh, try to address them in their foolish manner or to instigate them. They reply to them, Kalu Salama. Salama in, in, Ar in Arabic, it can be translated as peace. Just like the word Islam, the root word of Islam is Salama. The root word of the word Aslim, Islam is Salama. And it's this, it is because of this root word Salama. The scholars, they say that Islam is a religion of peace. Islam is the religion of peace and tranquility. Islam is the religion which is aiming to establish nothing but peace and tranquility and tolerance in each and every society where it is practiced. It is only the ignorant or those who have the lack of Islam who will respond to the ignorant in the ignorant fashion. But though those who have Islam and the etiquette of Islam and they practice the Islam, they will respond to the foolish in peace. So the scholars, they say, hear the meaning of peace. Hear the response to the addressing of the foolish is one either by saying salamu alaikum peace be with you just imagine a person is barking and he's shouting or he's trying to create an argument with you and instead of you getting angry responding one day just try to sell him uh, you know tell him salam peace be with you my brother relax and you see, it will be, you will feel like you have poured a bucket of water on the situation. On a fire that was about to engulf. Just try this out one day. I have tried it many times. And eventually the person starts, starts smiling. Once I did that, and the person was angry about something, and he started speaking, complete stranger. And I said, peace brother, you know, salam. And then he started smiling eventually. So this is what Islam teaches us. And one of the meanings of this peace is, some of them, they take it literally, the scholars, and they say it means to greet in peace. But others have argued that the peace here means that you end the conversation in a peaceful manner. Regardless of the differences of the interpretation, we all can understand that when we have a discussion and it starts uh, becoming into an argument or a senseless argument and if you end it in peace and turn it around into a peaceful manner then you are implementing this verse of the Quran however in either of these cases whether you just say salam and try to end it or you continue your debate or your argument and not get excited or you know by if somebody mocks at you or your mother or your father or even Prophet Muhammad وسلم, we have so many people doing that and when we go back in the time of Rasulullah himself we will find so many incidents when this person and that is why Allah Azza wa Jal he said وَمَا أَرْسَلْنَاكَ إِلَّا رَحْمَةُ لِلْعَالَمِينَ That I have not sent you, O Muhammad except as a mercy to the alameen, 
to the whole universe. He was sent as a mercy. When people came and he was prostrating in Mecca, someone came and put the entrails, the intestines, the insides of, of, a, of a dead camel on top of his back and he was in sajda. Rasulullah he did not react. There was once a man, he came when Prophet Muhammad was distributing the booty of war. And these are the very people who are responsible for the bad name and impressions that they create. As Prophet Muhammad at his time he said, from that person and I will tell you what happened and these kind of attitude and, and, and uh, creed we can see till today in some of the societies which is completely unacceptable in Islam so Rasulullah he was once distributing the booty of war you know the collection that they had from after a battle whatever they had earned from it whatever the wealth and, and uh, the weapons that the, the enemy had left over. So he was distributing the wealth and the weapons, the booty. And one man comes, an old man, oldish looking man, uh, a crooked looking man. He comes and he tells to Rasulullah Ya Muhammad, O Muhammad, be fair and just. Distribute this booty fairly and justly. Allahu Akbar. A man comes to Rasulullah when he is amongst the Sahaba and he tells, Oh Muhammad, be fair, be just. And Rasulullah he said, If the Messenger of Allah, if Muhammad, the, the Rasul, the Messenger of Allah will not be fair, then who will? And this man was to, he, he left after this. And the Sahaba, they obviously, when they heard this, they asked Rasulullah, Ya Rasulullah, Umar radiallahu anhu, if you allow me, I will break his neck. This was the reaction of the Sahaba. If you allow me, then I will hit his neck, I will strike his neck. Prophet Muhammad sallallahu he let him go. He did not. He told Umar to calm down. And he said, this is not, because in one of the narrations we know that Rasulullah sallallahu he said that he doesn't want people to say that he is the messenger who kills his own people. He is the prophet who kills his own people. He said, let him go. After this man had left, Prophet ﷺ, he asked who this man was and he asked where he is and the Sahaba, they tried to look for him and he was gone. In the meantime, Rasul ﷺ got revelation of this, about this person. And Prophet ﷺ, he said, there will come a people from his progeny. There will come a people from his progeny who will recite the Qur'an and it will not go beyond their throat. Meaning the Qur'an's recitation will be on their tongue and they will have not understand and it will not reach their hearts. Prophet ﷺ, he said about this man, this man who was re revolting against the Messenger of Allah, against the best personality ever to have been set, who has set foot on this earth. There will come people from his generations, from his progeny, who will recite the Quran and it will not reach below their throats, it will not enter their hearts. And eventually Prophet ﷺ, he went to say, that these will be the people who will be, there is a, this is a long hadith, I will say it in short, who will call other 
Muslims, Kafir and the leaders, Kuffar and you know, they will do revolutions and th these kind of things. And Prophet ﷺ, he went on to say, and this is something really scary. He said, they will be amongst the dogs of the hellfire. Allahu Akbar. They will be the dogs of the hellfire. May Allah protect us from such understanding and such etiquette or such kind of characteristic. But eventually we learn from this incident that Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu he did not let loose his companions on this person who was ridiculing him. But there are many other ways that people can have a reasonable response. Especially in these sensitive times, my brothers. That we know a certain incident that took place in Europe where people after months or maybe years, they said we took the revenge of the cartoons of Prophet Muhammad And eventually there are processions and people coming out of their houses in thousands against Islam and Muslims because it was done in the name of Islam and Muslims. This is absolutely devoid of Islam and Muslims. This kind of reaction is devoid of Islam and the teachings of Islam and the teachings of Prophet Muhammad Allah Azza wa Jal goes on to say we have several other ayahs and we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give us the ability to implement what we learn from the Quran and Sunnah. However, we don't become those uh, dormant and, and completely uh, apologetic Muslims I, as well. We do not. Because we need to make a debate. Ud'u ila sabili rabbik. Allah Azza wa Jalla says in the Quran, when you make a debate, an argument, and you call out people to the path and the right path of Allah, you have to use bil hikmah wa mawidat al hasana. That you have to use your hikmah and a good speech and a good etiquette with a very one of the best manners and speeches and etiquette. We don't just keep quiet and have absolutely no response. Yes, we must have a response and we should have a reasonable response. But however, when we have this kind of response, that we argue in, in wisdom and in rationale, and we try to implement the sunnah of Muhammad Sallallahu we do not lose our composure and start using words of ignorance or ill speech or actions like we have seen in the past people burning effigies and coming out in processions and burning and calling out you know uh, names and, and uh, making processions in the streets. Just imagine, my brothers, just imagine. If these kind of incidents took place in the tr time of the Sahaba, can you imagine Abu Bakr, Siddiq radiallahu anhu? Can you imagine Umar and Uthman and Ali, Abdullah ibn Umar, Abdullah ibn Abbas, Anas ibn Malik radiallahu anhum wa arda. Can you imagine all these Sahaba coming out? Can you imagine Umm Aisha or Umm Salama? Or can you imagine Fatima radiallahu anha anhuma? Can you imagine them that they would be coming out in streets in procession? with flags and, you know, calling out uh, slogans. You can never imagine the Sahaba doing this. There were times that they had to 
control their response and that they, they were time that they had to defend it. And this is how the attitude of a Muslim should be. Unlike those people in the West, their teachings, we find in their teachings that if somebody slaps you on one side of the face, you give the other side. You know, this is one of their teachings. But what happens if somebody slaps them on one side? You will get Hiroshima and Nagasaki. This is the response you get. It never, nobody gives the, the other face, other side of the... But Islam doesn't teach us that. Islam tells us to give, a, give back the reasonable response. According to the time, according to the situation. When there is a time to defend and there is a burglar that comes in your house, you will not tell the burglar, okay, come, please come in, have some tea and coffee as well. Sit down. Okay, this is one of my wardrobes. You can check the other one. Here is my uh, suitcase where I keep some stuff and here is the other. You will never call the burglar and you say, okay, you know, treat him like a guest. So at this time, because Islam is the religion of nature, it is the religion of fitra. As Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu he said, Kullu mauludin yuladu alal fitra. That every person he is upon his fitra, upon Islam. This is a religion of your nature. And it conforms to the nature of all human beings. And it teaches us in each and every situation how to react and <clears throat> what kind of response we can have. So we don't go in extremes. Like for example, some people may start making fun of other people's gods or other people's elderly or other people's uh, belief systems. As Allah Azza wa Jal, He says, La tasubbu alladheena يَدْعُونَ مِن دُونِ اللَّهِ فَيَسُبُّ اللَّهِ عَدْوًا بِغَيْرِ عِلْمٍ Do not revile those they call on beside uh, Allah Azza wa Jal. Those who are calling, those who are not Muslims. Do not revile their gods or their beliefs. Or do not revile their call, their their, their uh, religion don't call names don't uh, speak ill about them Allah is telling us this in the Quran and he goes on to say Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so they in their hostility if you do so maybe they in their they in their hostility or in their response and in anger, they will revile and they will say something and they will have ill speech about Allah and His Messenger or Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala without knowledge, bighayri ilm. <coughs> without the knowledge of what they are speaking. And this is why we do find in the West and especially now internet has opened us to some of the most horrific language and attitudes that we see of some people in social networks. The most horrific reactions that they have. And this is because their excuse is, it's because of those extremist Muslims is why they call names to Allah and they call names to our beloved Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu and to the Muslims and their followers and even to the Quran and whatnot of Islam. It is because we Muslims have gone far away from Islam and we cannot when the time comes muster together our strength to have a reasonable response and a reasonable argument and debate. 
and we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and this is why you will see wherever you will have this teaching the teaching of Islam implemented through and through you will only see good in the society you will only see that people in the society are coming in the folds of Islam hundreds and of thousands of people have come into Islam after the events of 9-11 since the events of 9-11 every year more than 20,000 people on an average in United States of America every year more than 4,000 people in Germany every year approximately 5,000 people in United Kingdom every year in France in Spain all throughout the world in China in every non-Muslim society people are coming on an average in thousands into Islam without us doing much about it because Allah Azza wa Jal has promised us that Islam will spread in each and every corner of the house but it is those who are the bearers of Islam those who are shouldering the responsibility of prophets and messengers are the ones who will keep carrying carrying forward this message of Islam and this my brothers and sisters is each and every one of you each and every one of you is a messenger of Islam each and every one of you is a torch bearer of Islam each and every one of you is a represented representative of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam if Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was here today we would love that we would be in his company we would love that we would react in the way he did we would love that he would be our leader and we would follow his orders whatever he tells us whenever he tells us but he is not amongst us today however we have each and every uh, word that was important to us as wahi that had to reach to us that we can implement we have it preserved in the Quran and the Sunnah of Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam so I ask Allah Azza wa Jal that in the end that Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala makes the Quran the guiding light of our lives I ask Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala that he makes the Quran the light the beacon of light that guides not only us but all of our uh, you know relatives and friends and the members of the society if it will reflect on our actions the Quran and the Sunnah of Muhammad Sallallahu would reflect in ourselves in our actions then you will see that Allah has Allah as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has promised in the Quran Islam will not take much time inshallah to spread in each and every household Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.